Okay, what we got here is another uh, no start. This is a Caterpillar with a uh, 4G63 engine. A bit of history. Um, it came from the road and they said that all the cylinders were have low compression and we're gonna try to verify that. So I hooked up my uh, Cisco and I have a pressure transducer hooked up to the cylinder number four. We're gonna do a cranking test on this. We're gonna try it and see what we get. Okay, you heard it cranking. All right, it's not starting. So let's go back and take a look at that waveform. Stop this. Now remember, this is a cranking test, and there's something that is abnormal here. For one, the maximum pressure that I reached was only 46 psi. But what's abnormal is the vacuum. First of all. This is not supposed to be here on a cranking. This should be almost flat, a cranking. Now, vacuum on the other hand reached 10, almost 11, 10 and a half PSI, which equates to probably 20 inches of mercury. That's a whole lot of vacuum at cranking. So normally a cranking engine should only produce like maybe five inches of mercury. And this is cranking produces 20 inches of mercury all right so that in itself points me to a restriction on the intake and that's probably the reason why we have so low of a compression because if you think about it vacuum is the absence of air so if there's nothing to compress then the pressure would be really really low all right Okay, so just so we have a regular vacuum gauge, we're hooked up to a manifold, manifold, and then let's see. So that confirms it. You see it that it is pulling in 20 inches. Now the of one vacuum. thing that I want to look at is this throttle plate. Is it opening? I've seen it before that if it doesn't open, because this is an electronic throttle. If it doesn't open then basically it's an intake restriction. You're not gonna be able to take in any air. So this is the one thing that we're gonna test next. And we're gonna use oscilloscope to look at the signal coming from the computer, if it's actually trying to open okay, this up. So uh, this is the diagram for this uh, computer. It runs this engine. Here is the uh, electronic throttle. And right now I'm hooked up to the num pin number 12 and pin number eight. So right there. My red is going to be on my pin number 12 and the black piece is going to be my pin number 8. So the red, which is pin number 12, should, all, should be the one giving the positive and number 8 should have a constant negative. Right now at key on, I see this signal. So this tells me my negative is good because I get almost 12 volts on the positive end. Right there now what I expect is when I do the cranking it the frequency should become more uh, should become more frequent this pulsing all right so let's try to crank it see if we make any changes it becomes more solid okay so let's pause this Let's go back. So this is what happened when I was cranking. My voltage actually went down to six volts. So this is a uh, graphical representation on, of the uh, motor control for the throttle. And this is what I think is happening here, or at least how this is being controlled. So we know that the throttle here, the plate, is spring-loaded right here. So to keep it always closed. 
Now to open it, the motor has to turn clockwise or counterclockwise, it doesn't really matter. Now for the motor to operate, we need a negative that is provided here on pin number eight, and we know that's always present. And then a pulsing signal is gonna be provided here on the other end of that motor from pin number 12, which is gonna come inside of that computer from a driver here. So that pulsing, the more frequent and the more wider the pulse means to say you're putting more power to the motor thereby increasing the torque and speed to open it up to counteract the spring here but without that pulsing right here on pin number 12 then the motor cannot overcome the spring and of course the throttle always remains closed so what i was really expecting is a more frequent pulsing and also a wider pulse to the, uh, the motor via pin number 12 coming from the ECM. And I know that we have the 12 volts here and I know it's reaching that computer or the ECM. And so that's why I am doubting the ECM itself. I know it has an RPM and we're just at cranking. So the ECM is not gonna be looking at the map or the ECT yet on order to put pedal position sensor right here uh i already verified the rpm and it's there it's going to the computer it's got the 12 volts and i know it's got the negative so i don't think there's any reason why the computer should not open this throttle except again maybe that there's something wrong with the driver itself inside the ecm and so that's the thinking that I have right now. We're going to replace the computer and see if my theory is right. All right. So I swapped out the box, still have the same connections and already I can see a big difference, right? So I don't have that, um, intermittent pulsing. All right. So let's try to crank this and show you the vacuum gauge cranking now. We started already. Here we go. All right. So next thing I'm gonna do, we're gonna try to put the um, in cylinder compression tester again and see what we get. Okay. Uh, same setup as earlier. In cylinder in the number four, my pressure transducer. All right, cylinder number one or uh, channel A, zero to 200 psi. Let's crank it and see if there's any change to the waveform that we get. Okay, that should be enough. Battery's getting a bit weak. Let's go back to the last part and let's zoom in on this part a bit okay so here we are my peak right now reached about 120 psi now that's a big difference